everyone and welcome to computer vision lecture series this is lecture 3 part 3 until now we have seen how we can change the pixel values of an image by image filtering we can apply different kind of linear and non-linear filtering operations and get different outputs we can re get re uh, rid of noise and sometimes we can improve the image quality as well however in terms of frequencies uh, there are well established tools like Fourier series and Fourier transforms which can help us do more rigorous analysis. But before we jump into how we can handle frequency domain in, in, uh, f through our images, we want to take an overview, a short overview of uh, what does it mean uh, when we say we are sampling the image and um, uh, some problem uh, related to that like aliasing. So, we want to take us just uh, understanding and quick quickly just go through what these things are before we jump into rigorous analysis of uh, uh, Fourier domain or frequency domain. Uh, here is an image of a zebra. We take every other row and every other column and essentially we would have some sample the image by two and we generate something like this. This image is smaller in size just I have resized the image just to show visually uh, the comparisons here you can see when you compare both these images you can see that near the edges during the edges you see a bit of blur and uh, even in the background when you see closely you see that there are some um, some blurring uh, occurring here so while subsampling there is uh, uh, aliasing is a very common problem how aliasing occurs we are going to look at it now uh, a signal can be represented in multi-dimensional form if it has multi dimensions but uh, and usually physical signals are having uh, are dependent on time or location or things like that so uh, usually signals can be represented in multi uh, multi dimensional uh, manner here we take an example of a one dimensional sinusoidal wave and let's sample it here along this points mentioned along the curve of the sign when we draw a, uh, when we draw a curve that passes through all that points we see that we we perceive another wave here which has lower frequency and it has lost the original information so um, the sample signal still looks like looks like the original wave uh, still looks like a wave but it's not original it has because of um, because of this subsampling it has lost it lost its original frequency so this is an aliasing problem simply shown in one dimensional uh, signal uh, it can be dangerous subsampling can be dangerous why because uh, you might have seen examples when in movies or in videos when you're watching uh, a video that uh, a car is going forward and the wheels are rotating in the other direction this is a very common problem of subsampling Another is checkerboard effects or checkerboards they disintegrate or become disarrayed and it does not make sense and this is not a problem of the original uh, scene it is a problem of uh, image capturing mechanism basically subsampling. Uh, so some certain patterns in the scene like uh, checkered boards or even striped shirts can look funny or can become distorted on color television specifically Muir pattern. Muir pattern can occur, you can see here an example of Muir patterns. Muir patterns can occur when you are, when there is a, a pattern like uh, stripes um, on an object in the scene being photographed and that can interfere with the shape of the sensors and these kind of patterns can appear in your final uh, output. This is an example of uh, how a checkerboard becomes distorted at far sides due to the limitations of sensing module on the cameras. Pay attention here. So let's let's assume here uh, that the wheel is rotating uh, clockwise on the right hand side, and the frames are from left to right. Uh, pay attention to the attention to the vertical and the horizontal spokes. And if you look them, look at them closely, it would appear that they are rotating uh, anti anti clockwise in the anti clockwise uh, direction. However, if you just pay attention to this dot uh, mentioned on the spoke of the um, on the one of the circumference of the wheel you will see that it is actually rotating clockwise. Uh, so if you are 
sampling this kind of rotations you need to know the rotational frequency of this wheel and you have to sample accordingly otherwise they seem to rotate they, they might seem to rotate in another direction or they can have um, distorted um, output so Ny nyquist Sy shannon sampling theorem is the is one of the answers for uh, aliasing problem um, you might have uh, learned about this in from different places like uh, it was one of the main things being talked in pattern recognition um, class uh, with its derivative as well we are not going to talk about the um, base, uh, main th uh, main derivative or the derivative is not the focus of our computer vision class but its interpretation is so what does nyquist Sam shannon th sampling theorem tell us that when you are sampling a signal at discrete interval the sampling rate should be at least greater than twice the maximum frequency of the particular signal so uh, and, and 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 doing this can uh, achieve um, uh, we achieve uh, uh, an output signal which we can trace back and recreate our original signal um, in the example shown here if this is not uh, sampling at um, higher than two twice the frequency because when you look at this um, black uh, signal you cannot really reconstruct the original signal from this there is no information here except the amplitude information that can reconstruct your original signal with the original frequency you have uh, the original frequency information is lost here so this signal was not sampled at a frequency higher than its twice um, of the maximum frequency of the signal this is what channel theorem tells us um, this is a good example of how you can sample the signal on the top and below is a um, bad uh, sampling example um, basically a naive solution to fix aliasing is uh, you have a better sensor or you have a better capturing rate or you have a better frame uh, rate for your video capture capturing device so but this is not always uh, feasible right uh, sometimes these systems or this camera or the sensing systems are fixed uh, in systems which are very big and they are not easy to replicate for example space exploration you send one camera and uh, there might be an issue of uh, aliasing you cannot just go and uh, replace the sensing device on the uh, on your rovers that you have sent outside in space so and it's true uh, and it's a trivial problem so uh, anti-aliasing um, we can achieve we can achieve anti we can fix aliasing by reducing or removing the frequencies which are very high so what we um, in, uh, by doing this what will happen is we will lose some information from the signal but it is at least better than losing the signal entirely. So essentially what we do is we apply a low pass filter. Um, we have seen what a low pass filter means in the previous lectures. Uh, this is a simple algorithm for downsampling by a factor of two. Um, so we start with the image and we apply a low pass filter which removes the higher frequency components and then we sample every pixel um, by two so uh, we generate some something like this kind of image pyramids um, this is the original image you pass it through low pass filter to remove the high frequency components that is calling called blur and you subsample it by two taking every other row and every other column and then you reduce it by uh, half the resolution reduces half and this is the first level of your subsampled image you successively go up on doing this and you can you can create an image pyramid the reason to introduce this concept here is that we will use this later and this is used quite frequently in uh, state-of-the-art literatures these days for feature extraction the advantage here is if the original image has a, a, an, a, an image with higher resolution can give us finer uh, features so here you can see smaller clouds doors trees um, windows and uh, facade and everything in this in this building whereas as you go um, uh, higher levels when you reduce the uh, resolution the global features come into play more here in this image you are not able to uh, see the doors and the windows on the facade of the church but at least you can see from the profile that it looks like a building and it might be a church and this gives interesting information for analysis so image pyramids at different scales reveal different patterns 
uh, fine scale features as well as global scale features. So what happens when we subsample without pre-filtering? Pre High frequencies, here is an example when um, the image is subsampled by one half and then another by one half and again by one half. Here you can see that some high frequency components that were present in the image they start to appear and they tend to distort or de uh, degrade the image quality. This is an example just to sc a scale example so if you reduce the resolution by half successively this is how you will uh, essentially see the image even when you are looking at the image in a smaller size you can still see the artifacts or the distortions that appear due to the presence of high frequencies. Um, but what if we do the subsampling with Gaussian pre-filtering? Here we have applied Gaussian pre-filtering and then uh, subsampled the images successively by 1 by 2. Here we see that uh, the blur starts to appear successively and in, um, uh, and in this image you see a lot of blur. However, rem remember that this image is of 1 8th uh, resolution than the original image. So just to uh, see them in uh, similar sizes, here we see that this image, the high frequency components or the distortions that were visible in the, in the, in the um, no non pre filtered um, subsampling is, is gone. So this is the advantage of uh, doing pre-filtering. Uh, and Gaussian is a very good uh, filter for low pass uh, frequencies which suppresses the high frequencies in the image. So we saw in this um, in this lecture, in the part of this lecture, uh, some uh, what is sampling and what is aliasing. In the next, we are going to do uh, rigorous Fourier analysis using Fourier transforms and Fourier series. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.